Thank you, uh, Sherry. I appreciate that. Hey, Linda and Carolyn, glad you caught me live. So let's start out with this light buttermilk color. And we're just going to, I'm not even going to worry about where to put this. <laughs> we're just going to do that. And then we're going to use this little car washed sponge that has been cut up into pieces. It used to be like kind of like an oblong oval shape. Um, and I cut it up into pieces and I use it to quickly base coat designs. So that's what I'm going to do with this light buttermilk. We're going to give it a quick coat. And if you've struggled with painting a background of something, this is a really good way to do it because it puts the paint on quickly and you usually get a pretty smooth, even application. Um, sometimes it can be hard if you're painting a large area on this MDF because the paint starts to dry so quickly that sometimes you can't get a good even coat. So using a sponge like this can allow you to like push the paint and kind of smear it. And not to mention it goes on so thin. Whoops, I missed a spot. Goes on so thin that you can dry it really quickly. So I'm just gonna hit it with my heat gun and dry it and then we'll hit it again because it, it, it does go on really thin. So you might have to do this two or maybe even three times depending on the coverage you're wanting. Um, but it is really quick. Hey, Nancy. She said, I'm a newbie here. I do crafts years ago. I'm starting again. Well, welcome back to the crafting world, Nancy. You're in the right place. <laughs> we paint door hangers every week here on Tuesdays at 11. I paint live. Um, a couple Tuesdays ago, I painted the one that you see hanging up behind me, that Hello Summer. And it was a big hit. We've sold a lot of the wood blanks of that one. It's got 3D pieces. So all of these flowers, can you see that? They're three-dimensional. And my mother-in-law loved it so much, she requested that I paint her one in blue. And so I've actually painted two like this. I painted one for my mother, and then my mother-in-law saw it, and she goes, ooh, can I have one too? So that one's hers. It's waiting for her to come pick it up. <laughs> but I hung it up because I thought y'all might like to see the different colors. Oh, TikTok couldn't see the blue one. Here's the blue one. Isn't that pretty? And we did it with a wood grain tool, which is super cool. So if y'all missed that tutorial from a couple of Tuesdays ago, go back and watch it on my YouTube channel. You ordered that one, Nancy? I think a lot of you guys ordered it. We sold, ooh, we sold like a record amount of them things. Oh, you like my glasses? These are pair eyewear. So they're like removable magnetic toppers that I can pop on and off. Um, I actually have a link for them over in my TikTok profile. If you um, need new glasses, they're like 60 bucks and you can pick out the toppers that you get with it. They release new toppers all the time, but just a fair warning, it is kind of an addiction. You'll, you'll become addicted to buying toppers. <laughs> uh, Peg says, I'm wearing pair. What toppers are you wearing, Peg? I love mine. I, my son even love them, loves them. I got him a set, and um, he's been wearing them to school. So see how much better this is covering now that we've got coat number two on there? I'm trying not to smear it all over my desk, but I guess it doesn't really matter. This desk is easy to clean. I don't know why I try so hard not to get paint on it. It doesn't matter. Um, so if you haven't been on my page in a while, you might not have heard, but next Monday we are doing a Bible painting workshop. So if you haven't heard about this and you've never painted a Bible before, this might be something that you're interested in. Um, we're going to be teaching it in a private Facebook group. This is the design that we're teaching. Sorry, TikTok. I can't hold it up for you guys. Um, but it says the Holy Bible on the front. It's a mustard color background with florals, bright pink and purple florals. And in white lettering on the back, it says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And so I'm going to be teaching step by step how to paint a Bible like this. And so I did put a link to that Bible workshop up in the video description for you guys. I don't know that I have the Bible workshop. I think I do have it linked on TikTok, but somebody go check and let me know. Um, but it's $15 to sign up. That is the only design I'm going to be teaching, but there are other designs that you can purchase if you need templates for maybe a different style. Um, and so those are an additional cost if you're interested, but it's going to be um, a lot of fun. Let me show you the, well, I don't have them on here. I was going to show you the other stuff. Oh yeah, I do. Here we go. So there's a couple of other styles that you can purchase in addition if you want one that's like with sunflowers and a different saying. Or if you want um, this one right here, this one was designed by my friend, Miss Jennifer Raiden. And then Casey Hope gave us a bunch of different sayings. They don't have like flowers or anything like that on them, but you could change these out with the other three designs. So you could pick kind of like your cover style or your back style and then pick one of those phrases if you like one of those better to go in there. Okay, um, just looking at this on video probably looks good, but in person, 
it's a little streaky. And I know we're going to do some distressing on it. So I'm trying to decide if it needs another coat. And I feel like I'm going to go ahead and do one more quick coat on it because I don't want to regret it later. It's kind of harder to take it back, you know. So it doesn't take that long. We'll just put another coat on it. Again, why am I holding it up? Trying not to get paint on the table. <laughs> and it's okay on these wood blanks. If you've never painted on a blank like this and you're wondering why did she just paint all over um, the laser etched letters and everything like that. It's because you can still see them through the paint. So feel free to go ahead and do that. And I'm just covering the entire thing because it's easier to do that than to try to go around these two smaller stars. Um, so that's, that's why. <laughs> All right. So that's three coats on this. Do any of you guys have questions about that Bible workshop or anything else? Yes, they are prescription glasses. I just saw that question from Shelly. Uh, let's see. I can't see. Hey, Heather, I, I can't see the names for some reason. TikTok needs to make them darker. <laughs> oh, Angie, that stinks. She said she lost her toppers at a Jimmy Buffett concert. Uh, Debbie says, do you prefer to paint MDF over plywood? I've been having issues. Yeah, I like the MDF. It's smoother. Um, you do have to seal it really well if it's going to be outdoors. But yeah, it, it it's it's so much nicer to paint on. Marie, yes, you need to go grab that wood grain tool for sure. I love mine. I can't wait to use it on other projects. Um, Yvonne can't wait for the Bible workshop. Awesome. Oh, Nicole, I hate that. Yeah, bifocals and what's the other one called? Um, progressive lenses do cost quite a bit extra. If you just have a standard prescription without those things, it's I think it's just $60. But if you have special needs with your glasses. Um, it does cost a little bit more. Hey, Delane. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say your name wrong. Is it Delane? <laughs> hey, Delane. I'm glad to be back. Um, what kind of Bible? Holly, I did put the exact link to the Bible I'm going to be teaching on in the video description for you guys. It's an ESV journey, journaling bot. Slow down, Tamara. It's an ESV journaling Bible. And the outside of it is about the same color as this right here. It's just a hardback, kind of like smooth. It's not fabric or anything like that. And it's like made to be customized. So it's ready for paint. But pretty much any kind of hardback Bible will do. I did have somebody message me and say, what about this one? And it was a fabric Bible. And I'm not going to say you can't paint on a fabric hardback Bible, but sealing that I just can't give you advice on how to do that because I've never done it. So at your own risk is what I'll say. Um, will there be a list of paintbrush sizes to be used in the Bible painting workshop? No, Lori, I, I didn't think to put that together, I guess, because just a standard pack of like um, craft brushes will do. Just any of them that look kind of like this with the little flexible nylon bristles um, and just have two or three of, of like a two or three sizes of a flat, two or three sizes of like a filbert tip and two or three sizes that are like a round pointed tip like this. Um, just a little variety. I think, I don't think you're going to need anything special for this. Linda's already ordered her Bible. Good morning, Miss Pam. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, Nicole, this is a great idea. I know a lot of people give Bibles for graduation gifts. And we're doing this on Monday, Monday in a private Facebook group. Um, <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and start. Now that we've got our background painted, the next thing to do is the distressing because we can't start painting our stars yet because we are not going to get distressing on these stars. The distressing is in the background of the big star. So I've got two different chip brushes here. It doesn't matter what yours look like or what size they are. I'm just using two because I didn't want to have to wash out my brush in between because when you're distressing, you don't want any water on your brush. So most of the time when I'm teaching you to paint, I tell you to wet your brush before you dip it in the paint, but not when you're dry brushing. That's why they call it dry brushing or distressing. Um, and I also like to use a flat surface for this instead of using like an egg carton or something like that. So I'm going to use in two colors. Primary red is one. And instead of putting it in a little puddle, sometimes I like to just lay it out in a little line like that, like a little little worm or a little snake of paint. Makes it easier to dip this uh, brush into and to not get a ton of paint on your brush. So I got a little 
worm of blue paint and a worm of red paint. Um, okay. Lynn said, I'm going to try on a hardcover journal and stuff. But I like that idea. If you're a little scared to paint it on a Bible, you could always do it on a journal and do an inspirational saying on both sides or put your name on the front and an inspirational saying on the back or whatever. Um, don't feel like you have to do it on Bible. And if you're terrified to do it on your personal Bible for the first time, go to the thrift store and buy like an old hardback book that doesn't mean anything to you and practice on that maybe, you know? Okay. This is where people get a little scared. Have a paper towel handy. Dip your dry brush. Your See how these chip brushes are real like crunchy on the end? <laughs> That's what you want. Um, and we're going to dip in a little bit of the blue. I didn't get a whole lot on there. See? And then you're just going to kind of check it on your paper towel. That way you don't have any like big globs of blue. You only want just a little. And then we're just going to kind of like scratch and scrape it in different places. I'm going to look at my picture because I was trying to remember how much was on here. And we're just going to kind of put it on here in fun little places. I like to start off of the design first and then move on. So see how I started off the edge here? And I may start off the edge of this because anytime you first dipped in the paint, Starting at the edge is always a better idea. You don't want to have like some weird blunt spot where you've scraped it on. So start off the edge. And then once you kind of get the excess off, go across the middle a little bit. See how we've got less on our brush now? We can kind of grow across the middle and go. And you can do this one in different directions. Sometimes I advise with distressing to do all in the same direction. But that's usually like if we're doing like a fake reclaimed wood look and, and your wood grain would all go in the same direction but this is not the case this is just fun distressing so do it any direction you please and don't add too much because we are going to come back on here and add red and it doesn't matter if you get it on these stars because we're going to repaint these okay so feel free to get a little bit you know kind of going behind those stars and disappearing back behind there because we're going to paint over that kind of like those little wispy looks. This is going to be like a really vintage looking um, design. Like it's not going to look like a, a bright patriotic look. It's going to be more like a vintage patriotic look, which I love. Okay. Do you have a sample of the Bible you're talking about? Yeah, Sandy, I showed a picture of it a minute ago, but maybe you weren't on here. So this is the one that I'm going to be teaching in the Bible workshop. It's got pink and red florals on it. And so that's the one we'll be teaching. Ooh, Yvonne said old hardback hymnal would be a good practice. Yeah. Marie said, this is my favorite technique. I use it on many things. I saw you use this technique just this past weekend, Marie, or when we were together um, crafting in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> um, Wanda says, this is off subject, but where can I find your letters to paint? Or if you don't have them, the kind that are separate. Are you talking about like the... The letters like we used for the three ways to paint a wood letter, Wanda. If that's what you're talking about, in our shop, type in the word typewriter letter. And it, like typewriter, and it should come up. Because um, I think that's what we call them. I don't know what is on the end of this brush, but it feels like, like glue or something that's dried. All right, so I'm getting my second one. I didn't wash my blue one out yet because I might want to go back and add more. So don't drop your blue brush in the water just yet. Okay, here's the red. Here's where it gets cool. Adding more color. I geek out sometimes doing this. It's fun. And you can go heavier than this if you prefer a more a stronger distressed sort of look. I'm just kind of playing with it at first and then going to kind of decide from there if I like it or if I feel like it needs more. <clears throat> but do you see how I'm only getting paint on the very, very fringe edges of this brush? Don't go overboard. You don't need it. Just a little goes a long way when you're doing this technique. I really, really like the way it looks on the edges, though, when you, like, brush it on and it's kind of, like, clinging to the edges. It's really pretty. Now, if by chance you get a spot where, you know, say if you didn't like that spot, what I would advise you do is take your original background color, lay out a little worm of that, and after you're done, kind of like go over that spot with, with, with this using a dry brush to kind of like soften it a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, I feel like I went a little heavy with the red and I need some more blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my red in the in the water cup and pick my blue brush back up. And I went kind of light with the blue to start with because I was like not sure. Um, I didn't wanna like overpower it with blue and not have enough room for some red. And I occasionally kind of like that look where you've got a little too much. I, it kind of looks, I don't know, it just looks cool. So in some spots, I'm intentionally putting just a hair too much or not too much, but you know, a little bit more. So just kind of build on it. That's what I always taught my people to do in classes when I used to teach this technique is just keep building on it until you like the way it looks. And sometimes you may have to like put it across the room, step back away from it before you completely decide if you're done because it'll be harder to add more later after we've painted these other stars. So you may as well get it the way you want it before you start anything else. All right, I feel like that looks pretty good. I'm gonna stop there and we're gonna dry it. Okay, any questions about this technique or anything else? Where, I'm, where am I live? I'm live on YouTube and Facebook and TikTok. <laughs> um, you love this so far, thanks Ashton. So does Wanda. Hey, Beth. Hey, Tammy. Glad you're here. So talk loud. She says, I'm driving. How is it going, Tammy? Can you hear me? <laughs> it reminds you of an old quilt. Yeah. Okay. Beth says, I have a question. Sorry if you've already said this, but what type of or kind of brush do I need to get to do a dry brush? It's called a chip brush and they're super cheap. You can get them almost every like craft store has them or like Walmart craft department. This is a giant one. I don't suggest starting with this size um, unless you're distressing a really large area. But do you see how the bristles are real coarse and they don't look anything like these kind of bristles? These are real smooth and soft and fine. So you can usually find them at any kind of craft store um, in a variety of sizes. That little one inch chip brush that I did the blue with was perfect. Oh, I didn't tell you what color blue I used, did I, Emily? It's Victorian blue. I really like this one because I feel like it's a good um, vintage patriotic blue. Um, I actually used that one on the door hanger you see hanging behind me. And the red was just primary red, and then light buttermilk was the background. So we're going to use those same reds and blues for our stars. And this time I'm just going to put my paint in my little egg carton because I kind of need it to be in one spot, not spread out. Plus, I almost used it all up with the dry brushing. Um, for those of you who do paint parties or something like that, this is a really good one to do at paint parties because it's simple. It's only um, four colors. I was looking to see what color. This is the red star. So I've got a half inch flat tip brush. And because it's only four colors, you're not going to need a ton of paint to do this one at a paint party. You know, just four colors. And it's quick because of the distressing background there. I feel like this is one that could easily get done in like, I mean, if I was teaching it like an hour and a half, but, and that's only because sometimes we get to talking and eating and all that stuff and don't get, don't get done in time. So if you're a paint party instructor, teacher, this would be a really good one to add to your, your classes. Okay, so a little tip for you. If you're struggling with painting stars, start at the tip of the star, place your brush on the tip, and pull it away and along the edge of the star. That way you aren't like blowing the tip out and painting past the tip and messing it up. And then just fill in the middles. And this primary red probably will need a couple of coats, especially since we put the white behind it. If we hadn't, we probably wouldn't need multiple coats, but you know, it was worth it. <laughs> Oops, I got a paint ridge right here along this edge of the star. I'll see if I can pull it out. Just wanted to pop in. There's Charlie. Charlie's a little under the weather today, too. We got to go to the doctor later, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You tell everybody hi. Hi. <laughs> Oh, that looks good. Thank you. Julie says, what is the blue paint color? Oh, it's a uh, Victorian blue. Hey, Georgie. <laughs> yes, Wavon, I have been to the beach. I'm very tan. <laughs> I was also very sunburnt this weekend. It, it finally... doesn't, 
It doesn't look tan on the camera, but it is. <laughs> it does look tan, especially next to your little face. Look at your face compared to my arm. <laughs> Why, Vaughn and Cynthia say hi, Charlie. Hi. <laughs> Miss Pam says hi. You remember Miss Pam? Yeah. Yeah. She likes Miss Pam. Miss Pam gave her some gifts the last time we saw her. And I think she conned Miss Pam. No, don't, don't shake the table. She conned Miss Pam out of some goodies in Miss Pam's uh, craft fair booth, <laughs> her vendor booth. Didn't she you? She said every time you spin it, you better you you think of me. Uh, yep, and you probably do, don't you? <coughs> yep. <laughs> she said, I can't wait to see you in September. Yay! You say hi to Wanda. And Hello, Wanda. Janet. Hey, Janet. And Linda. No, no, no. Okay, you're bumping my arm. You're gonna have to. <laughs> you're gonna have to quit. I'm gonna go get something. Okay. Are you wanting to do a show and tell? Is that what this is about? Yeah. It'll have to wait till I'm done teaching this. Okay. okay. She needs her own Facebook channel. She really does. She she loves the attention. She's one of those kids. I, it's funny though because like you put her on like stage. And she gets nervous. She gets stage fright. But she wants to be the center of attention. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Wanda. You are so sweet. Yeah, she's coughing and woke up with a sore throat this morning. So I made her an appointment for this afternoon. <laughs> she is a sweetie. All right. So that was coat number two on the red. It needs one more coat. And then I think it'll be good. Um, something else I wanted to mention to you guys today, if you didn't know, we still have some tickets available. If you want to come paint with us live in September in Destin, Florida, you can kind of make a little beach trip out of it. It's a two day event. We're going to be crafting and painting all day together at the Destin Convention Center in Fort Walton. Um, we have a room block um, at the hotel across the street, the island, and so you can come and join us if you want to get tickets. You can grab a friend and buy your ticket at southernadornmentslive.com. Mm -hmm. We have some spots available. It's happening September 29th and 30th. This is our fourth annual event that we've put on. Um, each year it's gotten bigger and better. The first two we did in Nashville, Tennessee. And then we did one last summer in Dallas, Texas. And then this year we're doing it in Destin, Florida. And that's like my favorite place on earth. I love Destin. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some beautiful, uh, beautiful crafts and beautiful sunsets on the beach together. Um, and if you aren't able to attend live and in person, we will be selling virtual tickets probably in July. But you're not going to want to miss it. For anybody who's ever been before, I'm sure they're here in the comments. They can attest to how beneficial it is to be there in person. Hey, okay, Charlie is back. Why, why do we have funny ears on? You know Easter's over, right? Can you get me up? You're so silly. They have this galaxy on the ears. That's okay. Okay. I got to teach. I thought you said I could do it. But I said after I'm done teaching. I said <laughs> I'm not, my project's not done. Yeah, it is. All right. Get out. <laughs> brush oh. got me wet. Your, well, my brush was clean. It's just got a little water on it. Yeah, strep is going around. I've heard that. So that's kind of what I figure it is. Okay, this larger star down here at the bottom, we're going to paint with the Victorian blue. You're going to have to go do that somewhere else. I told you, you could, you could talk to him when I'm done. Okay. The only part you might find a little tricky is finding the edge of your star. You can still see the laser etched lines, but with the lettering and the distressing, it's a little tricky. I think it's right here. So like I said, start at the end of your star and pull your brush downward. All right, if they wanted to watch slime videos, they'd be on YouTube watching slime videos with all the other kids. <laughs> Go do that somewhere else. Oh, wow. Um. Do you hear me? I know, I know you heard me. Go on, take your slime. But and I want to spend time with them. At the end of the video, I told you you could come back and talk to him for a minute, okay? But let me finish teaching this. Paint. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right. Then you have to sit there quietly and quit squishing your slime. It's distracting. I have a hard enough time distracting without anybody else here in the room because I, I have like a squirrely brain kind of like you do. 
and my thoughts are all over the place and sometimes I can't read comments, answer questions and paint all at the same time. And then with you sitting right here beside me, it's extra distracting. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay. No comments about that. I was, I was wondering if y'all had questions, but if y'all don't have any questions, we'll just keep on keeping on. This is the Victorian blue, like I said, and I can still see my lettering. I know that's probably something some of you guys were worried about, but let me draw this and I'll show you how you can see the lettering through the paint. <laughs> Wavon says we will visit a lot, Charlie. She wants to see you in September in Destin. How many more days into that? Oh, a lot of days. I don't, I don't know. I'm not counting. She always wants to know how many days it is till the next thing she's excited about. <laughs> yep. Okay, let me show you up close. Do you see the, the, the letters? You can see them through the paint. So you might have to put your readers on. <laughs> it was funny. I was uh, teaching a project at Brooke Riley's um, uh, event. event. Yeah, it was her business retreat event thing. And this lady said, I thought you said we could see the, the laser etched lines through the paint. I can't see mine. And somebody said, put on your glasses. So she pulled her glasses down off the top of her head and put them on. She goes, oh, there they are. <laughs> So you might need your glasses came. on. I could have came. No, you were at school. You couldn't have come. Mm -hmm. You could have stopped me from school. Mm -hmm. No. I missed that. Oh, I missed You'll get to miss a couple of days of school for the Southern Adornments Live event that we're doing in the fall. Dare you. Oh, so one minute you want me to pull you out of school and the next minute you don't? No. Wait, what do you mean? She loves school. So you just said you could have pulled me out of school. And then I said, well, I am going to pull you out of school to go to Destin to the Southern Adornment Law Show. And you oh, said, how dare you? Oh, I thought you said, well, um, ne next event, you're still going to, you're still going to be in school while we're doing events. Oh, no, you're going with me. Cynthia yeah. said, I went to Southern Adornments Live in Dallas and I loved it. I learned so much and discovered new techniques, not to mention made so many new friends. If you can go, go. Thank you for that, Cynthia. It is a lot of fun. Mom, I put kinetics in. Somebody said, obviously, that isn't normal for strep. Yeah, it's not. Strep usually goes around um, in the fall for my kids. My kids usually get it like September or early August or late August, right after they go to school. All right, because so this is pretty much done except for our lettering and our fine details. So I'm going to, you could do this with a paint pen, but I prefer to do lettering with a brush if it's a lot of lettering. And this does say stars and stripes forever, so it's a lot of letters. So I am going to use um, a brush for this. Yes, dear. Did you have a, something to say? Well, uh, it's because there's, a, there's like in the summer or spring, there's like allergies going around. <laughs> I don't think it's the allergies. All right. So for this lettering, I'm using a small filbert tip brush. This one is real tiny. Um, I've used this one on lettering like this before. I think it'll be okay. If there's areas where it's going to be too wide, I've also got a round tip brush. <laughs> these are really pretty handles too. They kind of look sparkly. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby a while We're back. doing recess right um, I'm going to use my round tip brush on the thinner areas. They're doing recess right now. Oh, are you sad you're not at school? Yeah. yeah. I, well, I think they're doing lunch then recess. Yeah, yeah possible. Yeah, because we do lunch before recess. Yep. So, so see how I, I did like the, the downstroke with the filbert tip brush and yeah. then I switched. Are you just running commentary over here? <laughs> and then I switched to the round tip brush to do the edges of these that's, S's that are much smaller. That's beautiful. So I'm just going to rotate, rotate back and forth depending on the stroke that I need. You are so good at that. Thank you. You're such a good cheerleader. How do you do that? How do I do what? That. Paint these letters? Yeah. Tons of practice. I've been painting letters for a long time. Yeah, you're wearing my bracelet. Yeah, you gave me this bracelet. Okay, most, so see how I just did parts of the A? Most of the Yeah, I can go back with the round tip brush and kind of just connect the areas that are a little bit smaller. 
most of the bracelets I give you, you don't wear that much. Well, this one fit me pretty good. And this one's probably your most favorite I gave you. Maybe. The butterflies have like a little, like, maybe you live around, they have like a, a little shine to them. Mm-hmm. Butterflies. I think somebody commented. Somebody commentated? <laughs> commented? Can you <laughs> read the comment? What is? What did Lauren say? Read that one. Uh, it's Lauren. Okay. It looks so good. I need the uh, to cut this one out. Yep, you should. Do you remember Lauren? Yeah. My friend Lauren. Yeah. Yep. She's got a little girl about your age. Yeah, I miss her. Yeah. It's uh, Mia. Yeah. Emma. Oh. Close. Emma. I feel like she's Mia. She's <laughs> Emma. No, her name is Emma. It changed color. I don't know how kinetic sand changes. Jenny wants to know how many days of school you have left. I think it's you know? nine. Nine? Is that all? Uh, yeah. Um, so. Too bad it's not more than that. I don't know how kinetic sand changes color, but it changed the color of my sand. Because, I mean, my slime. Because I made, I put a little bit well, of it. Well, kinetic sand and slime aren't meant to be together. Yeah, but I put it together and it's good together because, like, stretchier. If you say so. See? <laughs> right as I say stretchier, it breaks. <laughs> How many of you guys are going to be trying this technique of switching brushes back and forth? If you haven't tried it before, it's kind of a game changer with lettering like this that's real whimsical, um, that kind of has um, wider oh. areas and thinner areas. Stars and stripes. So if you were teaching this at a paint party, you might not want to do brushes. Uh, nope, don't be jumping on my chair. I'm doing lettering. I gotta be real still. Get off my chair. <laughs> See y'all later at show and tell. Okay. Love you. Love you. Um, if Love you're teaching this at a paint party, you might want to just give everybody paint pens to use for this. She's full of it, y'all. Will this be available to watch later for reference? Yeah, it's on um, YouTube. It'll be on YouTube and on Facebook here. <laughs> Linda said, I do all the time, but I worry I'm going to drop the brush and mess everything up. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to like make sure and hold on to them. <laughs> oh, Yvonne, I remember Charlie did swim with, um, was it your grandson? I can't remember who it was at the pool in Dallas. I'm glad she'll have a buddy. Oh, you think your son has it? It's pretty awful. I'm wondering if that's part of what I had. I think I might have had COVID, but I also kind of wonder if I didn't also get strep because my um, taste buds have I even been kind of like swollen and irritated. Nothing has tasted right, and I've had no appetite for about two weeks, which is great because I've lost weight, but... <laughs> Um, it's no fun when you, when you're eating for sure. Similar to how we did the, the ends of the stars. If I, if you're having trouble with your lettering, start at the end of like this letter E and pull it backwards toward the rest of the letter. Sometimes that's easier than painting it exactly as you would write it. Because instead of writing the letters, we're kind of just drawing them on. So you're allowed to do different brush strokes than you would do if you were using a pen. Or a pencil. Oh, it was your granddaughter. I couldn't remember. <laughs> It's been a while. I've slept a few times since then. 
Uh, you're getting better at letters, but still have a grasp of stencil off your Cricut. I don't use stencils and Cricut very often. Um, I have one, but I just don't use it very often. I think ever since I got used to using templates and then laser etched blanks and stuff like that, I kind of quit using the Cricut so much. I pull it out more often than not now th these days for kids school projects. If they have to make a poster for something, we'll pull it out. Sorry, this lettering's taking a minute. It's just, you just gotta go slow. If you rush it, it won't turn out as good. Especially because it's like you gotta pay attention and look where the look where the laser etch lines are. You gotta watch or you'll end up doing a, a weird looking letter and it won't look right. I almost find it, I, I know I've been going through and doing the skinnier strokes like that, but sometimes it's easier just to do your wide stroke first because even though I did those, I feel like I still have to go back with my skinny brush and kind of just touch up and line everything up and all that. And so it's like, I don't know why I even bother doing that part first. It's easier just to do it second. Almost lost my E. There it is. It's inside the star. Almost there. Then we're going to do our finishing touches. There we go. We got our lettering on. Okay. While I've still got this round tip brush out, I'm just going to dip in a little bit of black and do some lines along the edge of our star. You can do this with a paint pen if you like. I'm just going to use the brush. Actually, I'm not doing a very good job here. Let's make that a little wider. Just kind of accenting the shape. with the black paint. And to me on lines like this, the quicker you move, the better. Because if you try to do it slow, sometimes you end up with like a funny looking line. And the line doesn't have to be perfectly like the same width all the way down. I mean, it's, it's art. It's supposed to be artistic. So if it ends up getting a little imperfect, just adds to the whimsy. Okay, I think that's it, y'all. What do you think? This is a real easy one. Only four colors. Quickly paint. I mean, we did this in 40 minutes, and it probably wouldn't have taken me that long if I'd been able to focus. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions about our Bible workshop or the Southern Adornments live event? Again, if you're just hopping on, this is the Bible we're talking about. We're going to be teaching this workshop Monday night at 7 p.m. Central in a private Facebook group. And so you can go sign up for $15 with the link in our video description. And there's three other Bible designs that you can purchase for an additional cost if you want to um, do a few more or do a different style or something like that. But I'm only teaching the one design. Um, and then questions about Southern Ornaments Live. I did see Pat said, is the hotel included? No, but we do have a room block. So you can use our um, booking link to save money on your hotel. There's lots of ladies who are rooming together to save even more money. So you can do that as well. All right. I'm going to click this and hold it up. Try not to mess up my black paint. I'll hold it on the stars. There's no black paint on the stars. You guys can see what it looks like. Cute, kind of vintage, a little bit um, primitive looking. I kind of like that too. So it gives it a different look. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning this uh, dry brushing technique. I know a lot of you guys had questions about it, and that was why I chose to paint this one today. Um, 
Yes, I'm not going to forget, Pam. Charlie, it's your turn. I promised Charlie she could come do a show and tell. So if any of you guys want to leave, you're welcome to. But I'm going to turn it over to her and let her just talk to y'all. <laughs> Charlie, you coming? <laughs> oh, okay. Here she comes. Uh, oh, you think you missed it? It's okay, Judy. You can rewind from the beginning once this is over. But we're going to let Charlie chat to, to everybody for a minute. So, y'all enjoy. Oh, you got to go get your stuff? Does that mean I have to keep the people entertained while you get your stuff? <laughs> while, while she's going to get that, I'll do a little show and tell of my own. Here is the wood grain background in blue. I kind of think it looks like water. So, this is the 3D Hello Summer that I painted for my mother-in-law. I have four things. Four things to show them. All right, you can have the seat. Let me get the paint out of the way so we don't get paint on things. So right. I, have have at it. I got this from Granny. It's some bunny ears. So then tell I, them about yourself. It has like some galaxy on dots on it. And, and then I have this slime where it's supposed to smell like cherry. I mean, blueberry, but it is very old. It is very old. So, it's, it's still good though. It's very stretchy. And I put some like, kinetic sand in it. And it made the color change. So... Hey, Judy. Yeah, I am. Um, let me squish this in here. And then I have this little doggy that um, it can like you press a button and it makes the barking sound, which is that. And I just gotta press the button right here. You untangle it, but <laughs> it does that. So, and then I have this packing bag that's tiny. I am eight. I am eight. Um, and then I got this from mom. It's some watermelon lip scrub. Tastes like it, smells like it, and it's pink. No. And then we have little notebook. Or you can do this. Thank you, Pam. Um, and then I have this eraser donut. And it's like a blush donut. It has like teal, my favorite color. Wait, I'm reading the comments. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Um, I got these two little thingies. Don't know what they are, but strange things. To token from school is orange <laughs> and then, this, this has turned into quite the little show and tell what all did you bring in here with you i don't know but and then i brought this little eight and you donut. bring the, the the laptop closer so you can see and show yeah. a little easier little donut. <laughs> donut all right i'm gonna turn tiktok off thank you kathy <laughs> Thank you, Linda. I'm reading in the comments. Uh, you don't have to get your forehead up in the camera, though. That's all they're seeing. <laughs> no. She said, do you paint like your mom? Answer uh, questions. Not that much. I, I kind of do. I'm kind of like a little me.
Sorry, I took down the other camera and realized that was the microphone she was using. There you go. Now they can hear you. No, come on. Thank you, Yavon. Let me see this. Let me see this. April Davis. Hello. Well, I'll show you how to unwrap this and how it works. I just gotta gotta bend and then do that. <clears throat> Has like a little tiny remote. I'll show you. Oh, look down. So like. It's so cute. Like, it has like a little mind of its own. So, like, once you press it, it's forehead. It's so cute. So, what else do you got to say? Hope you feel better, Charlie. Thank you, Wanda. Yes, wait. Yes, I do, Yavana. Yeah. Yes, Macy, I do love butterflies. Stacy, I love your comment. April, ah. Thank you, Yvonne. She's so fluffy. I named uh, Yvonne. I named her Snowball because she looked like a little snowball. So, Ooh. yes, I am, Pam. Uh, by the way, thank you for that thing, that little spinny thing. Snowman. I'm still reading. You're still reading? Okay, you're, you're I know your I face way I up in the camera again. I showed them like I did this. and then Oh, yeah. To yeah. show them how the puppy did moves? Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. How about you wrap it up and tell them have Bye, a good day? Bye. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks for entertaining Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.